Everything under control here, Constable? Well, nothing happens in Mount Thomas on a Sunday, boss. You know that. Could have fooled me. Now, if Nell wants me, I'm at the pub sending off Lenny. There's my free grog pass at the pub. Oh. Sheep and the goats, my boy. Len McCormick. A drainage contractor. Little Joanne Davis's boyfriend. They're getting married at last. They've only been living together for six years. Nell's dad would have had the shotgun to me in six minutes. Yeah, uh, Wayne, front desk. Can I help you, sir? Yes. Yes, I think you can. <clears throat> um, sorry, I've never done this before. Done what, sir? Confess to murder. You're saying you've just done a murder? No, you don't understand. Well, perhaps if you help me, um, let's start with your name. Oh, yes, uh, that's important, I suppose. I'd say so, yeah. Uh, my name's Peter Horton, and I killed a man ten years ago. He was my wife's brother, and I just thought it was time to give myself up. <laughs> hey, come on, if you drink and drive, you're a bloody Beat yourself, yeah. guys. <laughs> Len, congratulations, mate. I've known Joanne since she was a kid. You couldn't have made a better choice. Thanks, Tom. Two pots, thanks, Chris. Righto. I'll meet Scotty. He's my best man, Scotty. Oh, how are you, Scotty? Nice Good to day. meet you. Not bad. Hey, come and meet Jenny from me. You have to show me your badge, officer. What do you reckon that is? Pass, friend. Thank you. Yeah. Frank, <laughs> shout your beer. Thanks, Tom. Cheers. Cheers. And where's your boy? Uh, it's over there. Simon, g'day. G'day, Uncle Tom. It's not often you find the family of the bride at a Buckstone. It's not often we get a Sunday off from the sheep or what's left of them these days. Anyway, Len's part of the family, isn't he? I must say, I've always admired the way you waited, didn't have him. <laughs> not a choice. Ah, oh, Joanne's had me twisted around a little finger since she was two. <laughs> and you too, Uncle Thomas. Oh, oh Bob. You two know each other? Oh, <laughs> so I do. Bloody Nick Schultz and Mrs. Buckley Cab off. Enough. <laughs> Good day, Tom. I was just saying, it's great to see that you all men and Frank's Joanne are finally tying the knot. Yeah, uh, hope this means they're starting a family, eh? Mm. I don't usually drink coffee. You wouldn't happen to have herbal tea? No, mate. Right, well, there was a Roger James Young murdered on the 5th of October 1983. It hasn't been cleared up. That's the one. I think you'd better have a talk to a detective, mate. Yeah, he is. Where else? Yeah, hang on a tick. Come on, Lenny. Can the condemned man give us a bit of a smile? Hey, Come on, Lenny. PJ? It's fine. Wait. You're the bride's brother, mate. You take over. Because the last thing you want, mate, is if grandkids to think you weren't enjoying yourself. <laughs> you blokes look after that camera. I haven't had it long and it didn't come cheap. Oh, okay, yeah, mate. He was Louise's brother. Louise. Now, Louise Horton, she is now my wife. Roger was her brother. So you're saying you killed your brother-in-law? He wasn't my brother-in-law until after he was dead. He was a brute, a monster. He abused his parents till they died. He abused his wife till she left him. He abused Louise. Abused in, in what way? Oh, no, not, well, you know, not sexually. Okay, so what happened? We had a fight. I picked up one of those fire poker things and bang. And you didn't come forward at the time? It meant that Louise and I had a future together. We could marry, have children, put the whole thing behind us. Okay. So, why didn't you? I'm... I'm giving myself up. I thought you'd be pleased. Why? Why confess now? We've been trying to have children for three years now and we haven't been able to. And uh, the more I thought about it, the more it seemed like a sort of punishment. And I've just been thinking about it all the time. And I thought I'd... I just... Oh, 
shouting for a solid 15 minutes. Yeah, if yeah. you don't get the authorities, I will. Help! Help! Where's my father? You're in a hotel. Yeah, hang on, mate. Nick? Time for you, it's Wayne. Wayne? I'm sure you'd like it. Why don't you come into my caravan? Because I've got lots of lovely things I can show you. That's what witches say. He booked in with her, but his car's not here. And there's none of his stuff in the caravan. I could on you, Darren. G'day. You're not my father. No, you're right there. You know where your dad is? No, I don't. Right, well, I'm a policeman and I'm here to help you. Policemen have hats and guns. You see that car over there? That's mine. Let's go find your dad, eh? Come on. <laughs> He's a nutcase, mate. Genuine paid up member of the Not A Well Person Club. The murder happened. Yep. And was never cleaned up. Well, he knows that. They always do. Well, maybe he did it. What? That little wuss? Took on a bully and chopped him with a firearm in his dreams. If he didn't do it, what's he doing in the cells? Well, he might have done it. But if Roger Young is his brother-in-law, late, he's probably just been brooding about it and thought he'd liven up a boring Sunday Arvo by confessing. Why are you so sure he's a nut? Look, he says he killed this bloke ten years ago, right? So now we can't have kids. Now, does that make sense to you? Sort of. Yeah, g'day. It's Mount Thomas here, Detective Hashem. Would Con Pappas be on duty, please? I mean, I'm not saying he really is being punished, but if he thinks he's being punished, well, who says murder is a saint? Oh, I do, mate. They're all bloody sane. The only people who think different are the shrinks trying to get him off in court. Yeah, g'day. It's uh, PJ Hashem here, Mount Thomas. You blokes had a murder there. A Roger James Young. October 83. Never cleaned up. Go on. Okay, with the food, the case of champagne and the cash discount, that comes to six eighty four, which is three forty two dollars each. <laughs> Cheap at half the price. Mm. I did, right here in my pocket, I have five hundred bucks in an envelope, and it's gone. You're saying someone nicked it? I must have. Uh, well, look, uh, I can cover it right now. I'll give you a check in the morning. <laughs> Look, I'll come back with you, make sure you didn't leave it at home. Meanwhile, Chris can check under the tables and everything. If we don't turn it up, I'll get one of the boys on it. Okay, thanks, Tom. Yeah, thanks, mate. I wait to hear from you. So? 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 They're checking it out. Well, it could be you'll get a big tick for this one, PJ, solving a ten-year-old murder. Yeah, or I could end up looking like a complete idiot because the guy's lying through his teeth, which I bet money on he is. Eight! They're getting younger. Dang, PJ. Oh, this man's PJ. That man's Wayne, the policeman. This is Sally. G'day, Sally. Is this the caravan park? Yes, yes. Daddy wasn't there, was he, Sal? Wasn't in town. Daddy's things went in the caravan. Yeah, well, I got this ten-year-old confession to deal with, fellas. Maggie won't be back till tomorrow. Maybe Chris could look after her. In the pub. Mel. Nick, I don't think Ross has ever met a kid. Just because I'm the lockup keeper. She's the lockup keeper's wife. And couldn't you and PJ? Hi, just in time to make me a cup of coffee. Where's your friend? Ah, uh, this is Sally. Hello, Sally. Sally's going to be staying with us probably overnight. That's nice. Hi, my name's Roz. Haven't you got pretty hair? I can't talk to ladies. Why not, darling? Because ladies might take me away. You'd like to uh, put me in the picture, fellas? I just thought I'd stay overnight with Mum and Dad. I mean, if Lem wanted to kick on with some of his mates, I didn't want to get in their way. Well, it didn't look like he was going to be kicking on to me. Too full already? No, no, just quiet. Doesn't sound like my limb. 
Oh, you didn't find it. Five hundred dollars, Tom. How could anyone do that to us? I mean, this is our town. These are our people. Probably a blow-in, Mum. Someone travelling through. Oh well, maybe. Maybe Chris will still turn it up. Uncle Thomas. Mm. Yeah, we're a few strange faces, but you can't know everyone. Like the old days. Oh well. I'll see you all at the wedding, if not before. Dad, I'm so sorry. Wouldn't have mattered once, but the way things are, it makes a bit of a dint. <laughs> Leaves a sour taste. Yeah, we're locking the doors next. <laughs> see you, Tom. Thanks, mate. In the meantime, we'll hold in. Ta. Well, the officer who's handled the case left the force. And the file's been put on microfilm after seven years, so we can't get at it tonight, can we? Can we hold him? Well, he's not asking to leave. Well, it doesn't answer the question, mate. What are you saying I should let him walk? If it turns out he didn't do it, you're going to be in strife. Yeah, and if he did do it, I'd let him go. I look like a complete dick brain, mate. Yeah. How's Sally? Caught up with Wayne watching cartoons. It's a good thing I'm not the motherly type. I feel rejected. What was that stuff about ladies taking her away? I don't know. Either it's happened to her or she's been told that it could. Anyway, one of you gentlemen like to escort me to your murderer? Yep, and if it comes to a fight, my money's on you. Is that vegetarian? Yeah, guaranteed. I have a tea's herbal. Thank you. Thank you. in the van and there's no point looking in there she's long gone the police have taken her police police look, she won't go with me wayne i'm a lady it makes a bloke look like a bloody idiot yeah but a very sweet one look i've got to go wait oh and um, the murderer hasn't been fed the toothpick's in the cupboard and he's a vegetarian so you saw him okay okay bye bye have you got a murderer? Oh, yeah, it's OK. He's locked up. Can I see him? Only if you finish your breakfast. Well, the officer who handled the case has left the force, so I'm not holding my breath. Records will pull the file off microfilm, hopefully, this morning. Well, while you're waiting, perhaps you could find Frank Davis's 500 bucks. Well, he got Buckley's and you know it, boss. Anyway, what's he, uh, what's he doing carrying that sort of cash? Pride. You know, pull it out and peel it off like the good old days. Oh, is this a new recruit? Yeah, now that you're here, she's yours, OK? <laughs> Patterson, eat your breakfast at home. This is for PJ's murderer, boss. I checked him when I got here. He's the only exercise he had. You're not intending to take this trial with you, I hope. Who are you? I'm Sergeant Croydon. Who are you? I'm Sally, and I ate my breakfast so I can go. You don't say. He takes a hostage, you sort it out. Is this cow's milk? No, soy. Well, that's all right then. Hello there. What's your name? Sally. Sally. Always wanted kids. Yeah. Well, come on, matey. You've seen him now. Can I help you? I understand you've got my kid here. Uh, what name is it, sir? Well, um, my name's uh, John Henderson. My daughter's name's Sally. I understand one of your officers came and took her out of the caravan yesterday. Where have you been since then, sir? I had some business to attend to. Didn't I see at the Imperial Bar yesterday? I might have been in there. You might have been. You can't remember. I was in there, yes. You skirt off to the pub. You leave a kid in a caravan for 16 hours. I got called away. You stink like a brewery, mate. You were drunk. Is there a problem here? This bloke claims he's Sally's father. There's no need to take that line. No, isn't there? Aren't you due on patrol? <laughs> Boss, the report was made at 1600. It's 08 now. 
Let's open and shut neglect. I think we can handle this from here, Constable. You don't deserve to have a kid, mate. G'day, Possum. Thanks for looking after her. I'll just take her off your hands now. No, you won't. We don't hand over children to just anybody. Would you have some ID? Sally, tell the nice policeman who I am. He's my father. I'm very angry with him. See? Come on, Sally, let's go. I said, would you have some ID? Well, not on me. Is your car outside? No. Where is it? I, I left it somewhere last night. I, I was pretty drunk. And well, I if wanted... you told us the registration, perhaps we could find it for you. I'm sorry, I was running late. I've clocked you at 90 and K over the limit. Can I see your licence, please? Look, look, it's a clear road. Clear road's not the point. The reason I'm running late is because I was looking after Sally. That's part of the lock-up keeper's duties. <laughs> she kept us awake all night. Nick, I'm on 11 points. I'll lose my licence, please. If you're on 11 points, that means you're not learning from your mistakes. Oh, you bastard! It's the first time I've heard that one. <sighs> Look, you're gonna put me out of business. Without a car, I can't work. Oh, great. I do you a favour and you put me out of a job. Not me. 19k over the limit plus 11 points equals suspension. <sighs> Bloody blue healers. That's very good. Yes. You look like a reasonable sort of young woman. Oh, I wouldn't bank on that, sir. The little girl's identified me. All I want to do is collect her and go. That's not possible unless you identify yourself first. She's identified me. Sally is very young. Look, would you have, I don't know, a photograph of the two of you together? And your things, yeah. And your things are in your car, which you can't find. Would you like to report it stolen? Of course, that would mean giving us your rego number. And then we'd have your name. I don't have to give you my name. No, you don't. Please. Mount Thomas Police. Hold on. PJ? Yep. Clem Underwood on the phone. He says he handled the Roger Young case in 83. They're putting it through. Clem. Yeah, Patrick Hashin. Listen, mate, the uh, Roger Young killing. Yeah, well, the sister's husband, boyfriend at the time, walked in here last night and said he did it. Ah, a bit of a wuss, manly slimey, but who knows? Uh, Peter Horton, salesman. I oh, did say they were keeping the relationship a secret. At first, I thought he was joking. Uh, Nick never jokes about stuff like that. Tell me something I don't know, Wayne. Look, it won't go through, though, will it? I mean, you talk to him about it, for me, please. And what do I say? Well. Tell him to rip it up. I can't do that. He outranks me. Can't you muster a bit of courage? Ros, I can't. Anyway, what's the big deal? 80 bucks isn't going to break us, and you were speeding again. 
Let's just pay the fine and forget about it. It's not the fine. Then what is it? I'm on 11 points. If I get this ticket, I lose my licence. I can't drive, I can't work, and that's it. Finished. Peter, the detective who handled the case says he never knew the victim's sister had a boyfriend. You, Peter? Never heard of you. You got anything to say about that? And like I said, we had to keep it a secret. Well, I think Louise had guessed what had happened. She didn't want to get me involved as a suspect. Ah, fair enough. Now about the fight. Yes? Oh, there wasn't one, mate. Roger Young was sitting in front of telly, drunk. Got his from behind. Right. That's how it happened. Well, you said there was a fight. Big noting. Except he wasn't watching TV. It was in the kitchen. He was sitting at the table, drunk. I came up behind him and hit him. The kitchen. So it was. Well, you would have known that, eh? There's always stuff kept back from the press in case of false confessions, isn't there? Mm -hmm. After I killed him, I crushed his beer can and stuffed it upside down in the top left pocket of his shirt. And that never got in the papers. Mount Thomas Police. Uh huh. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Leary. That's very public spirited of you. Bye bye. Well, how at the caravan park? She thought we might need your rego number. Cow. Okay. Right. Seems the car's registered to O. Raymond William Lamont. That's not me. Car stolen, is it, sir? Brazen mate, he lent it to me. Congratulations, Raymond. You've won the big one, flashing lights and all. You're wanted for breaching an apprehended violence order against your wife and abducting your seven-year-old daughter, Sally Jane Lamont. It wasn't like that. No, what was it like then? Not like that. It was her left me. Said she wanted her freedom. I didn't have any bloody freedom either, but she had to have hers. She took Sally away from me. Said I couldn't see her. She took out that order. Ray, they don't hand out apprehended violence orders and packets of cornflakes, mate. Look, I might have made some threats, but I, I never laid a glove on her. Threats don't help. So what's going to happen? Well, you've had it for four months. The court's going to be pretty sticky. I'm going to jail, aren't I? It's up to the court. Last night won't have helped. I hadn't had a drink the whole time we'd been on the road. Sally was asleep. I just thought I'll go into town. You know, just the one. Got away from me. It does that. It's probably why she left me in the first place. It wasn't freedom at all. It was me. Joanne's back. Did you forget something, love? He was there when I got home. Who was there? Len, he wants to call off the wedding. He what? He said he just didn't feel ready yet that he was being bulldozed into it. Bulldozed into it? I'm sorry, he bulldozed him. He was very upset. Where is he? Is he still there? He said he was going to the pub. Typical. Oh, that young bastard grew up a bit. Don't do anything stupid, Dad. Simon! Son, you don't have to go through with it if you don't want to. Yeah, I mean, everything was OK. Everything was sweet. Then this whole bloody wedding caper comes up. Uh -huh. We're blowing over the guest list. We're snarling at each other. My mother wasn't too keen on me being best man anyway. <clears throat> You've talked to Joanne? Yeah. You're going to have to talk to Frank. Another three here, please, Chris. You blokes still celebrating? No, I called the wedding off. You called it off? Yep. Was this your idea or Joanne's? Oh, give us a break, Chris. I feel like a mongrel as it is. Good. <sighs> You're gonna be getting a lot of that. 
Well, better than getting married if you're not sure about it. Ah, good day, Frank. We're going to talk, mate. No, we don't. Are you all Frank? No mate of mine. Relax. Come on, Frank. Just stay out of this. Got nothing to do with you. Look, just calm down and take it easy. This won't solve it. Calm down. The bastard's decided to call it off. I love Joanne. You've got a funny way of showing it. Now put him up. Let's just talk about this, Frank. Gutless wonder. <laughs> Why don't you try bloody listening for I'm a change, listening to Frank. what? More of your excuses. Oh, I'm not making me. excuses. You're his father. They make him do oh, the right thing. I do love Joanne. I just need time to think. Oh, time to think. You've had six years yeah, to well, think. Oh, look. All right, everybody. Well, shut up. Now, would somebody mind telling me what's going on? Okay, you two. This is none of your business, Tom. Anything that causes a breach of the peace in Mount Thomas is my business, man. Now sit down. You want something for that face? Your old man still packs a wallop. The farm keeps him fit. Someone mind telling me what the hell's going on? I mean, you and Joe have been together for six bloody years. You're not kids anymore. You're an old married couple. You're about to put the brand on one another. What's going on? You got yourself another woman or what? No, I bloody haven't. Keep your shirt on. You wouldn't be the first, you know. I haven't got another woman. You've got to believe that. You two still get on? Of course we do. Don't we? So we did. Uh, thanks for squaring things up for me yesterday, too. Are you sure about this? Well, we found the money. That means... Could I? What's got into him, Bob? I thought he and my Joanne were happy together. But it was you who raised it in the first place. You were the one who said, let's get married. Oh, come on. Your mum was hinting, my mum was hinting, your dad was looking at me. Crikey, even my dad was looking at me. You know what such a harem scarum he's been on his day? You never told me all this. If I'd told you, it would look like I didn't want to. But you don't want to. I didn't say that. I just don't want to be pushed around. So, you do want to? Yeah. I just don't want to be forced. Who's forcing you? I don't know. Me, I guess. Don't hit you really hard. I had it coming. <laughs> Please leave the office as you found it. To city slickers. That's country policing for you. Read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest. Raymond Lamont, did you process him? Yes, boss. How much cash was he carrying? Oh, a fair amount. Um, just short of 600 bucks. 590 something. I can check if you like. No. Nah. Always carry that much cash to your own? Sorry? When you were processed, you were carrying almost $600. So? It's a lot of cash. When you're trying to keep your little girl away from the witch of a mother, you can't use credit cards. Well, that makes sense. You were seen in the bar of the Imperial Hotel. I thought we'd been through all that. Yes. Yes, we had. PJ, you were using a video camera at that Buckstone yesterday, weren't you? Chris's, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, maybe you got a shot of our culprit. Oh, it's a long shot, boss. Yeah, but we'd kick ourselves if we didn't take a look, wouldn't we? Look, give Chris a call, see if we can borrow the cassette. Yep. Fabulous camera work. Now, yeah, there's Frank. Got his coat on there. Uh, yeah, I still had the camera. Oh, there he is. He's got his coat off now. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, Lady. 
，就是来干杯干杯。Play it slow, mate. Bloody hell! Why, Bob? I had three bad weeks in a row. I... My son's back's turned. I couldn't even pay for a drink. Oh my. Oh, I've got it now. I can pay it back. Please, mate. Not for me. For, for Len and Joanne. I'll give the kids a break. This would smash it up. You know it would. Can't be a drink this early. This is Frank Davis' 500 bucks. You found it. Under the jukebox. Did I? Yes, you did. I'm not going to have to swear to that in court, I hope. No. Okay, jukebox it is. I didn't see the hat go around for this one. No, you never will. It wasn't your own money. Ah, cross my heart, spit my death. Okay. I'll call Mary now. Oh, is it really only Monday, Doyle? Yes, boss. Haven't cleaned up Sunday yet. Bring me up to speed, will you, PJ? Oh, brilliant clean-up on the Frank Davis theft, boss. Oh, and there's a pick-up organised for Sally and the father. Back to town for them. And homicide have organised a pick-up for Edward the Confessor. Oh, good. So it's a clean-up all round. Yep. Can I help you, madam? Yes, I believe you have my husband here. Uh, your name is? Miss Horton, Louise Horton. I was away for the weekend. I just got home and I found this on the table. My husband says he's turned himself in for the murder of my brother. Uh, Mrs. Horton, I'm Detective Senior Constable Hashem. I've just taken a full statement from your husband. Oh, no. Would you like to come through? Oh, it's so stupid. He has made a full confession. Peter didn't kill my brother. Well, you know that for sure. Of course I know it. I killed him. Huh. This way, please. Constable. I'd met Peter two months before, August 83. I'd never had a boyfriend, or I just scared them all off. Tea. Thank you very much. Peter was... We just clicked. He was so gentle. That's what gave him the strength. I knew Roger would find out, and he would go after Peter, and... I couldn't have that. I just couldn't have that. So one night I waited until Peter was, I mean, Roger was drunk and killed him. Justified, I thought. Except we haven't been able to have any children and we've been trying for years. And you think that it's some kind of punishment that you can't have kids? Oh, yes. We both do. What else could it be? So what's Peter's story? Why confess to killing your brother if he didn't do it? Uh, oh, I told Peter I was coming to see you today. Perhaps he just thought he'd get in first. You can uh, see why I love her so much trying to sacrifice herself for me. You don't believe her, do you? She didn't do it. You've got to let her go. We've got two confessions, Peter. Homicide, I want you both. I know you're lying. Sorry? I said I know you're lying. And they will too. You see, from what I've heard, your brother-in-law was hit here, from behind. Which means it was either a very weird swing or a left-hander. And you're not the left-handed one, are you, Pete? Your wife is. I'm sorry. I wish you'd been able to have some kids. Is the name of a very good Melbourne lawyer. Anyone can get your wife off. She can.
And I watch cartoons. And there's no TV. Yes, there is in there. And that's a police TV, Sally. The fat man watched it. Um, I'll let you watch the TV if you don't call him the fat man, OK? Let's go. Give your hand, mate. No, mate, she's fine. Don't ask me, Wayne. Ask you what, mate? What you going to ask me? Since you brought it up, losing the licence, mate, it's going to put her out of work. Mate, if I start doing favours, I've got to do them for everyone. Yeah. Just drop it. What happened about Sally? Oh, our old man's being held. They're charging him with abduction. Seems the ex wouldn't let him see Sally, so he snatched her. Melbourne D's are picking him up later. I feel kind of sorry for the bloke. What sort of a bloody father leaves a seven-year-old in the caravan by herself? He was drunk, mate. He passed out. Doesn't mean he doesn't love her. Imagine it, mate, not being able to see your own kid. Thanks for the offer. What offer? Give me a hand. That was when I thought there was some point in it. Sir, that wanted the divorce. I don't want to hear your story, Ray. First offence? Apart from traffic, you know. You might do time. You might get a bond, I don't know. But what I do know is young Sal's going to be your kid for as long as you're both alive. I know that. I do know that. Yeah? I'll take the long view, eh? Write her letters, ring her up. Send her Christmas and birthday presents even if you know they're not getting through. Keep copies of your letters to show her later just in case she doesn't get them now. You've got to kid yourself somewhere, have you? No. And what's with all this social worker stuff? I'm just saying you can't replace them. Okay. Come on, Ros, we're going to miss it. The Mick bloody shorts be there. And we all will. Boss has organised relief from St David's. I've never been to one like this before. But don't you want me to drive? Above all, try to practice safe sex. The best contraceptive is a glass of ordinary cold water. Not taken before, not after, but instead. <laughs> Have fun. Be happy, Barry. <laughs> for they are jolly good fellows, for they are jolly good fellows, for they are jolly good fellows. And so say all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Safe drive. Lenny? Hello, Roz. Now, I didn't think we were speaking. Oh, well, who needs a license? Oh, well, that's just what I say. You're a real bastard, you know that? <laughs> you just want favours because you're a copper's missus. It was a clear road. Yeah, yeah well, you know, you do the crime, you do the time, Ross. Bastard. No, no. You and your bloody highway patrol. What do you want, Ross, besides your licence back? Eh? What, you want everyone going around making their own rules, a free-for-all, do you? Oh, well, I... Are you... No, no. Have you ever pulled anyone out of a wreck, Missy? Missy? Oh, sorry, Mrs Patterson, Mrs Patterson, I'm sorry. Have you ever done it? You ever pulled a body out what used to be a car? 
You ever stood around listening to someone scream and then you lose them because you couldn't get them out? Okay, all right, you've made your point. Well, not really. Not by a long bloody point. <laughs> what the hell's eating you? Well, you, you want your licence back and I want my wife and kid back. Oh, you don't have a story, do you? Oh, I thought everyone needs a story around here. I... I thought you were single. Ooh, I am now. Look, um, Nick, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know. Well, good on you. Another bloke was drunk. Actually, he was legless. And he took my wife and kid, and the courts took his license. And he had some fancy damn lawyer got him off. So I set a gun out of this bloke's place and killing him like I felt for about five minutes. I went off and I joined the Highway Patrol. Like the man in Jaws. On man in Jaws. Uh, in the movie. Uh. Sharks killed his friends, and so he killed sharks. Well, good on him. Good on him, Ross. Look. Look, you'll clear road. That could have been someone's kid. Could have been. No one went out there to be popular. I'm just trying to stop what happened to me. It happened to some other poor bastard, all right? Yeah, all right. Can I, um... I'll get you another beer. Hey. Let me have my drum. <laughs>